Hey guys, welcome to another video of uh, Code Wars example first look. My name is David Kim and just to give you an update on my channel, I was going to call it Algos Explained and uh, maybe in the future I will change it back to that. But right now this YouTube channel is linked with the email address, the primary email address that I use to send out job applications. So I realized that if I had changed it and I did, um, luckily I sent myself a um, a testing email, it said Algos Explained sent you an email, so I couldn't have that, I had to change my name back on the email on Google, so uh, right now it's saying David Kim, and um, yeah, so that's that's kind of where it's at right now. I still want to call myself Algos Explained or the channel, I think it's a, it's a reasonable name that represents the channel well. Uh, but yeah, you already know what this is, this is the first look, I haven't seen this problem yet, this is level 6 from Code Wars, so let's get started. This one's called reverse or rotate. I'm assuming we're going to have to reverse or rotate something. Revrot, that's the function name here. The input is a string, uh, is a string of digits. Cut the string into chunks. A chunk here is a substring of the initial string of size SZ. Ignore the last chunk if the size is less than SZ. Okay, what about if it's more? Um, if a chunk represents an integer such as the sum of the cubes of its digits is divisible by 2, reverse that chunk otherwise rotate it to the left by one position. Put together these modified chunks and return the result of a string. Okay, cool. So it's like a, you got an if conditional and then you do one thing or another. So let's see. If SZ is less than or equal to 0, or if string is empty, return that. So I think, well, for starters, the empty thing is pretty easy because we'll always know whether it's empty just by checking it. So if uh, str, or this some parent here, str oh, is an empty string, then we could just return um, oops. we could return str. Or if the size is less than or equal to 1, so go ahead and put that in there, sc or less than or equal to zero, I mean. Cool, so if SC is greater than the length of STR, it is impossible to take the chunk size, hence return that. Um, is, if SZ is greater than the size of that, is that another if? Uh, well, it starts out with the if that, okay, so I guess it's another, a third uh, conditional. If SZ is greater than the STR uh, the length, then it's impossible to return a chunk of that, so return, oh no, wait, return a empty string. Okay, cool. So these are all returning, so if this return an empty string, if this return an empty string, so those are all the cases, um, and now, so those are pretty much called the base cases. Um, if you attempt this, I'm pretty sure we'll pass a couple of tests, uh, and then fail the rest of them. Cool. Just like I thought, the ones that we have to, the ones that cover the base cases, we passed them. That's all we took care of right now. Okay, so if a chunk represents an integer such as the sums of the cubes of its digits is divisible by 2, what do they mean by sums of the cubes of its digits? So, I guess take a number and cube it? Is that what they mean? Um, let's see, let's look at, these numbers are huge, so I don't want to use those for my examples, but these over here, they seem pretty reasonable, and so, 1, 2, 3, 4 is a string, and 0 is the size, so, okay, that was just one of those, oops, dang it, okay, and this one, we got an empty string, here, we have something, um, okay, that's just another empty string, Dang, they cannot give me a short, small example, huh? Alright, this is what I call not good examples. And if you're doing like a coding interview or whiteboarding somewhere, um, you definitely want to go through some examples after the question has been explained to you. But you don't want to give huge numbers like this. Always go for small examples and then try to tackle those examples from different, uh, different sides. That would probably be the best way to go. Um, okay, let's see. SC is greater than, or over here, if a chunk represents an integer, such as sum of its of the cubes of its digits is divisible by 2, reverse the chunk. Okay, 
So it looks like, let's see something that got reversed. Um, this one did not get reversed. Is there a reversal here? Come on. This one did not get reversed. This one. All right, looks like they don't give me an example of a reversal. Okay. Or maybe I'm getting it wrong. If a chunk represents an integer set as a cube, some of its cubes is divisible. Uh, some of the cubes of its digits is divisible like to reverse that chunk. Okay. Otherwise, rotate it. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe I'm missing something. First of all, we need a chunk. So uh, if they want six, they want a chunk of six, right? Into chunks. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a chunk. All right, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's another chunk. Okay, so they took two chunks and put them together. It looks like this one got rotated. This one uh, also got rotated. Um, if this is also a six, then that got rotated. And this, this got reversed. Okay, and by this, I mean... If we're looking at this second example, these seem to be 12 digits long, both of them. So we're going to have two chunks, two chunks of six. This first chunk is going to be rotated, whatever the computation ends up for that. Um, but this second set of numbers, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, it seems as if that got rotated. 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so um, it said here, if the cube of the digits is divisible by 2 and so I'm going to just cube everything or at least uh, these digits here and see if it's divisible by 2 so I'm just going to do it on the calculator real quick because I can't cube all that in my head um, there's a 7 there is a 6 and a 5 and a 3 6 5 and a 3 and that is divisible by 2. If you cube all of those added together, um, it's 1,952. And so, and I'm just doing that on the calculator. I realize I could probably do it on here for you guys. Um, but trust me, if not, pause the video and try it yourself. And, uh, and okay, I'll, I'll cube these guys over here. Um, well, one cube is just going to be that, plus 2 times 2 times 2, oops, plus uh, 3, times 3, times 3, plus 4, times 4, times 4, plus 5, times 5, times 5, plus 6, times 6, times 6, and that is 141, not to the by 2, so it looks like that's why that one got rotated. Okay, and uh, it looks like there's a bunch of stuff going on here, and I feel like helper methods would be the best way to approach this problem. Uh, first of all, we need to rotate something. Sometimes we might have to just reverse it. Uh, we definitely have to go through all the numbers and find the cubed value sum and seeing if it's divisible by 2. And so let's first of all create a function called, um, what should we call this? Cube divide by 2. So cube cube div 2 and we'll take in a number here and we'll just see is the is the addition of this this is by 2 and you know what maybe we'll just take a string here because I feel like as we go here we need to cut the chunks and we will hmm. Yeah, it'll be in a string format. We could make take a string format here, therefore, and then probably just return another string format because that's what they want in the end anyways. Um, okay. So this will return a Boolean. Actually, no, this will return a Boolean. Return. And so we'll do that. Add logic here for whether cubing it will be divided by 2 or not. So first things first, we need to take the string and we need to cut the chunks. And so it looks like all these examples, they give us perfect chunks. Um, maybe this one's not perfect. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
one, two, three, four, and A5 has been left alone. Okay, cool. So if there's extra chunks, just toss it out. Don't use it. Cut the chunks. Ignore the last chunk. Okay, cool. And so let's cut this chunk. I mean, the rev rod, I kind of want to put this in a helper function too, but uh, we'll, let's start off in here and um, maybe, we'll, we'll, maybe we won't put in a helper function. Um, I think uh, it'll be best to store these guys in an array. And we could just uh, take a for loop, I guess. Um, and uh, take a for loop and divide it. Or we could take the size and the length and divide it and see what we get from there. Yeah, I think that's better. To know exactly how many times, we'll use a while loop. While uh, cut is, uh, okay, wait. I need to solidify my thoughts here. What I want to do is I want to take the string, I want to divide it by the size, and therefore I'll know once I floor that, how many times I should cut. So let cuts equal str.length um, divided by the s size. And if I, math.floor this, math.floor. I'll get the exact amount. So say there's 12 digits, I divide that by six. I know I'm gonna have to cut it twice. And so let cut equals zero. That's how many times I've cut it so far. So while cut is less than cut, or cuts is less than cut. And then this is some, hmm, these are not good variable names uh, just cause they're so similar. So, so while that, then we will cut it and we will put it inside the array. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see, at this point we want to cut the array, we cut the string, I mean. And so slice, we want to use slice and uh, let's see. Mm. want to let's do I'm thinking so <clears throat> what I'm not moving forward is I'm thinking whether it'll be best to mutate the string or not um, if we mutate it then it'll be a lot easier for us but uh, I'm wondering if that ease is worth it um, let's see cuts is less than cut we'll have to do it that many times if we mutate it, then we just have to cut from zero to the size. But if we don't, then we have to have another variable that um, tells us how many times we cut it. Okay, I think I think we'll just not mutate it, and we'll do uh, chunks dot push because we're gonna push in here. We're gonna push an str dot slice, and we're gonna push it from the cut times the size to the size and I believe that will give us the right amount so say we have uh, let a string a b c d e f g then we want to do slice and if our say our um, size is three um, right now cut will be zero because this is the first time we're going to cut it times three and we are going to cut it to the size three so we're hoping we're going to get a b c great and so now uh, we're going to increment the the size or the cut cut plus plus and so at this point it's one times that um, and we get nothing and that is because we we uh, the second parameter. I must be mistaken on what that really represents. Um, maybe this needs to be uh, multiplied. Maybe that needs to be a six. Okay, that needs to be a six. Um, I guess that's kind of the ending. I thought that was the length, but that must be the ending. Um, let me make sure here. Um, JS array slice 
Okay, cool. So the end. Okay, so that is not the length, that is the end. And so uh, zero, zero, one, two, three. So they took all the way to the limit, starting from the first. So starting and ending before the the first is inclusive and the last is ex exclusive. Okay, cool. So we want to do that times cut plus one. And so that I believe is going to give us the right stuff. Um, simply because we, the first uh, number is going to make sure we start at the right place. The second uh, is going to make sure we are always um, pretty much we're in the right, uh, not in the right, but what I mean is it's going to make sure that we are, our ending is correct. And so what we did here was we did size times cut plus one because on the first iteration we want it to be a three, not just size times cut because that would be zero. Um, on the second one we want it to be size times cut times two. And so when it gets to the third one we want to make sure it keeps on incrementing, uh, multiplying it pretty much one ahead of what cut represents since that starts at a zero. And so that should work. Um, our chunks should now have the right amount of chunks in it. And now we can send it into some kind of helper function that can decide whether, um, that can decide whether it needs to be, uh, whether it's divided by two or not. And so um, we wanna keep our uh, function simple. And so this one will not bother trying to rotate it or trying to um, reverse it. It's just gonna tell us, okay, does the cute version of this need to be uh, rotated or not? And so let's start off with um, num equals, uh, let's parse this guy. And let me see if a number, if we can index into a number. No, we can't. And so maybe we don't want to, um, but then we can math.power it, math.pow, and we're gonna take a two and to a third power, but we can't do that with a string, right? Oh, we can, what the heck? Oh wow, we can do that with a string, so we don't even need to parse it, this guy. I did not know that. Um, num, so maybe we'll just call this num from here. And what will happen is we're going to uh, we'll call a num string just for clarity. We'll use a for loop to go through every single number and or every single digit, and then cube it and add it to uh, another num. So we do need another num, and we're going to be adding to this guy so he can start at zero. So let i equal zero. I uh, is less than num string dot length hmm. i plus plus. All right, so here we will do num plus equals equals <laughs> math dot pow uh, num num str of i, uh, and we're going to take it to the third power that's cubed and so we do that we have a num and return num uh, mod 2 equals 0 so this will give us if it's divided by 2 or not if it's divisible by 2 or not and we could test it out here this should be false cool all right so now we know it's uh, cube div 2 is going to give us the right digits and tell us is it divisible by 2 or not. And so, and now we have the chunks in this original function. We have to go um, and send each chunk into the div cube div 2 function. It is less than chunks.length j plus plus. And now um, 
Okay, so in here I'm thinking we're going to have to do some computation of this is where we're going to use the function cube div 2, but this is also where we should be re reversing or rotating it. And so at this point, I think we should be creating that helper function. Um, function reverse function rotate. Okay. And what reverse is going to do, this is still a number, or this is still a string version of it. Um, I believe because we're sending in a chunk and it's just simply a um, it's still a string at that point because we are pushing in string versions of itself <coughs> excuse me cool so we'll call a numstring here too and reversing will be um, I wonder if we could just simply reverse Is there something like that? No, but there is a there is a as here dot split uh, dot reverse. We can do that, and we could just join that join on null string. Cool. Okay, so the reverse will just simply do that. It will take the um, and we're just going to code golf this guy num string dot split we're going to split it it's already a string dot reverse uh, once it's an array and we need dot there um, dot join on null string and cool so that we could test that out real quick in here reverse uh, str and cool str used to be that Sweet. Uh, rotate will be likewise simple. str, what we're going to do is, and they want us to rotate one, right? That's it. Um, let's see. Otherwise, rotate it to the left by one position, which meaning uh, push the first number off and simply throw it to the end of it, like this and like this. So the one used to be at the front, it's at the back now. And so return num string dot slice and we're going to start from one um, and we can just plus it to num string of zero that should be fine too and so let's test it out rotate that str we can see that everything stayed the same uh, b c d e f g um, or after this is the original string down here uh, and the a got thrown back there and otherwise everything else is the same okay cool so now we know uh, those helper functions work um, actually might as well check this guy out too so cube div 2 and let's throw in a number like this that should give us false because it looks like they had a false uh, value there and they use that. This is expecting a string. You gotta give it a string and that's false. Cool, but this number was true. And so that should be true. Cool, all right, so far so good. Everything's looking good. And so we want to have an if statement if uh, chunks of j, that's going to be the chunk and we are throwing it in the function cube div 2. And so if that is true, we know that it is divisible by 2, which means we reverse it. If uh, some of the cube is divisible by 2, we reverse that chunk. OK, cool. So we are reversing it. And uh, we want to throw it together. So how about we create a or, or we'll just stick it in chunks again. Chunks of j equals uh, reverse verse of chunks of j. Oops, sorry. Um, else, we will that whole thing, but 
rotating it. Rotate. Okay, cool. And so at that point, we are out of the while or we were, we've been out of the while loop. We are going to return chunks dot join, um, joining everything together and returning that. So I'm pretty confident this will work. Um, let's go check it out. Ooh, we're failing a lot of them. We got nothing back. Okay, so what's the problem here? Instead, got nothing. All right, let's see if we are, well, we know we got in the while loop, so what are we even getting here? So maybe before we return that, um, console.logout chunks. And no, our chunks is nothing. Okay. How about after that? Console console.log chunks. Let's see at that point if we're getting chunks. No, even at that point, chunks is nothing. All right. Um, oh, okay. I did this wrong. We want cut to be less than cuts. And uh, cause yeah, cuts is the number of times we're trying to cut it. Cut is pretty much like this is how much I cut. Um, okay, cool. So, okay, that all passed. I'm pretty confident once we submit this, it'll work. Um, be sure to check out my other videos. I have videos linked uh, more of level six and more of these first look videos. Hopefully, that was helpful. Um, and if it was, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, thank you very much. That was reverse or rotate.